this should have never happened to me. I should have never experienced any of this. When I was 16 years old, I didn't recognize that me being a child and being in a marriage was abuse. And of course it was. I'm living proof that child marriage happens. My sister is living proof of the detrimental impact that it has when girls are married at such a young age, when girls leave those marriages. The nation really just didn't understand this issue was happening, didn't believe that it was happening. Okay, so I remember when I was 15 years old that this was the first time the conversation around child marriage came up and it was a really straightforward conversation with my dad where he basically said to me that somebody wanted to marry me and I didn't understand what that meant so my reaction was to just make a joke out of it and from that moment when I reacted like that towards my dad he then really changed his interaction with me. As a child facing an adult who clearly has an influence over you and has power over you, the next time that the conversation of child marriage came up, I was 16 years old. When my dad spoke about marriage again, this time I was trying to avoid what he'd previously reacted. And so I just kind of said to him, if this is what you want, then I'll do it. Because I knew if I'd said no, I would have probably experienced the same kind of abandonment, you know, the cold treatment from him. Literally from that conversation, which was like a minute conversation, the next thing I knew, I was being introduced to a complete stranger and this man that was much older than me. It was a very weird setup. I was in a room with my parents, um, just sitting opposite him, but I was said, I was told by my parents not to speak, not to even look at him, not to make eye contact with him because they didn't want me to seem um, like I was interested in him. It was uh, very weird. They wanted me to act very shy and, you know, like a good girl. So um, I met this man, and then the next thing I knew, I was being taken around shops buying a dress, jewellery and all the wedding preparations were happening and it was really surreal because if you imagine yourself, you're 16, you can't comprehend I'm getting married. Do you want to take a minute? Sorry. You try to comprehend you're 16 years old and you're thinking I'm getting married to a stranger. It doesn't really make sense. You know, all of your friends are probably just meeting up in the park and getting together, having a social life and talking about what they're wearing and the music they're listening to. But my life was, it was going to be so different, you know? So from all of this, really, literally from the minute I met him to my marriage actually happening, like the ceremony, it was like maybe a couple of weeks at the most. It, it all happened so quickly. Um, so so um, that year, the end of that year, I had my, my wedding party, essentially. And that was the first time I was going to leave my parents' home. I'd never been anywhere, not even one night away from my family. But I remember on that day, I had to pack all my things um, and just basically go and live with this complete stranger. And the thing is, no one ever explained anything to me. So I didn't have any guidance. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know, you know, what my life would even be. And then this, this party happened and all of my family, uh, my family's friends were there, all of my uncles, all of my aunts, you know, lots of people from the community. It was very normal to them. It was the most normal thing just you know, a child getting married in a wedding dress in front of all these people. And when I think of it now, I'm 36. It is the furthest thing from normal to me. If I saw a, you know, a scene like that, I would question that. And now all I think is of the hundreds of people that were there, how come nobody thought something was wrong with that? Um, 
So from that night, I then basically went to live with my husband and start my new life as a wife, which I, you know, I, I just couldn't get my head around. You're a child and you just want to, you just want to be with your friends. You just want to go to college. You just want to have fun. And there you have all these responsibilities of a wife, you know, cooking, cleaning, looking after a home. These are not responsibilities for a child. But all of a sudden you'll find yourself, there's no one else but you that has that role. And I just, I never got my head around it for the two years that I was married. I never understood what any of it meant because it just feels really weird to live a life, you know, 10 years, 15 years of someone senior than you. Um, but I had to grow up very quickly. I had to be the perfect wife. So I went from being a child to being an adult overnight, just because of my child marriage. Not because I, I grew up or I wanted to be in that position, because it was forced on me. So I was married for two years, um, and my marriage only really ended up coming to an end um, because of something quite tragic that happened in my life. Um, and that's that my sister, who was 17, she was only a year older than me, just like me, she was married. She was actually married before me, six months before me. Um, she was also a child and she was married to a complete stranger, very similar to me, someone she'd never met. Um, she didn't want to marry. Again, she wanted to go to college and she wanted to just have a normal, you know, normal teenage life. Um, but when she was married um, and she reported the abuse that was happening in her marriage, she faced a lot of backlash because she was blamed for what she was experiencing and she was told that it was her fault that she was in an abusive marriage and that she has to do better, she has to try better. And my sister Banas kept reaching out for help, not only from my family, but she would reach out to the police and, you know, to uh, other people to try and get support. But she never, she was never believed and she was never given any support. And when she one day decided, also two years into her marriage, when she decided she was going to take a really strong, brave stand and leave her marriage, she was seen to have brought shame on her family. And as a result of that, um, when she walked out on her abusive marriage, she was murdered in a so-called honour killing. You know, when you ask me um, why this day is important, this is one of the biggest reasons, because as much as people might not know, the, the extreme impacts of child marriage, this is one of them. I don't think they picture what the extreme looks like, and for girls, when they try to leave child marriages, death is often the extreme. And it's not something that you, you think of comfortably. It is uncomfortable, but it's the reality. And there are so many girls, not just in the UK, but around the world, that their life comes to an end because of child marriage. So when people sometimes ask me, or have asked me during the campaign, why should this thing be banned? Why should child marriage not exist? I always say to them, when you think of a child in a marriage that is a lifetime responsibility and commitment, there's not a single thing that sticks out that is positive for that child. Not one single thing. Everything attached to child marriage is negative. And all it does is, hinder childhood, hinders opportunities and all the dreams and all the aspirations that a child has. And how could, as a society, we don't want that for children. How can we picture our children in a marriage? When I think of a marriage, I see two people that are adults, that are making an informed choice to want to marry each other. Not children that are supposed to be children. Ministers and uh, MPs, they listen to us and the uh, MP that I had the pleasure of working with, Pauline Latham, 
she took this issue and she passionately fought for it. And we had so many challenges during the pandemic and beyond that. But really my involvement, a lot of it was just to continue bringing home that message that child marriage is happening and just how harmful it is, what it does to somebody's life. And that a lot of people are probably not aware it's happening. My sister was the thing that every time I thought of, like a negative thought, I thought, we won't get this. Every time we had a pushback, I thought, we're not gonna get far. We're not gonna get to the next stage. I always had my sister in my heart and in my mind. And I just wanted to make sure that we do it for her, for me, for all the other survivors. And I think as hard as it was to remain positive, I would say when we reached the third stage of the, the bill, the, the third reading in the House of Commons, that's when something turned and I, I felt like this was going to happen. This was real. And then I think the real moment that everything just felt like we've got it, no matter what now, there's no turning back, is when we started working with Baroness Liz Sugg. And she was just so incredibly passionate and powerful. And it felt like the entire process just sped up over like two minutes, the whole process of the, Ho the House of Lords. Um, I think that was the moment the when she came on board and we knew, I personally, I knew this was gonna happen. I felt it. and. The whole time, I just, all I kept thinking is, we have to do this for my sister, for me and for all the other girls. We have to do it. I feel really, really passionate about the work that I do. I feel like it's my life's mission to use my experiences for the better. And in everything I do, I, I carry my sister's memory and I, I try to honour her and her name in the work that I do. Um, but I'm definitely in a positive place in my life. And, and I think it's, it's, you know, it goes without saying, but experiencing the things that I've experienced, um, you know, child marriage, losing my sister, all of these things, they are things that will take time. And it's a journey and I'm on that journey, but it's one that is definitely on the way up. And, and my work gives me a lot of, my work is actually helping me heal believe it or not, my work helps me to heal from my experiences and, and to see that being involved in something like this and seeing in, in real life how this is going to change other people's lives, it's, it's enough for me to just feel like I'm doing so much better in my life, to be part of something that will change things. It's history and, and I'm, so, I'm so humbled and honoured to have been involved in this project. So child marriage cuts across many communities, you know, many religions and different countries. But I think to anybody who sees this step, this, um, this positive change, this change in the law as a negative, I would really urge you to think about the impact that it has on a child who is in that position. And I just want you to sit with that. I mean, I, I've spoken about my experiences. I speak in detail about what I've gone through. I assure you that every uh, survivor of child marriage, anyone who is in a child marriage, probably has a similar story to tell. There is nothing negative about eradicating child marriage. It is all positive. And if you think about it, it's actually empowering your child to have a future, to make their own choices. And what wouldn't we want in a society other than happy children who are our future?